sportsontappodcast.com, the place to go where you can listen to past shows, read featured articles, check out all of our social media updates, plus much, much more. Sportsontappodcast.com, the official website of Sports on Tap. For up-to-the-minute info on local high school sports action, including photos, videos, and live updates, be sure to follow Sports on Tap on Twitter, Instagram, and like us on Facebook. Why do you exercise? To look better? To feel better? To drop a few pounds? To train for an event? To defy age? Or to keep your ability to say yes to the things you love to do? Whatever motivates you, G&G Fitness Equipment is here to get you there. Treadmills, ellipticals, rowers, bikes, home gyms, and accessories. We'll pair you with the right equipment, teach you how to use it, and be there every step of your fitness journey. G&G Fitness. Your goal is our goal. RRT Productions, specializing in creating sports recruiting videos for all high school athletes. Want to play at the next level? Promote your talents with a video to send colleges. Affordable, experienced, and a high-quality video. Make us your local video production company. Visit our website, rrt-productions.com, and contact us today. RRT Productions, we shoot, we edit, you win you're listening to sports on tap presented by rrt productions here are your hosts rob troutman josh jeffy Ed Dick and Sean Duffy. And welcome to Sports on Tap. I'm your host, Rob Trotman. We have Sean Duffy, Josh Jeffy, and Ed Dick, who will be uh, calling in here shortly. Josh Jeffy is out on assignment right now. But want to welcome everyone uh, for joining us here on week two of our Ohio high school football coverage. Our week two game recap, Sean, and uh, a lot happened in week two that uh, was pretty exciting. A lot of exciting stuff happened in week two. A lot of games that we thought were going to be competitive turned out not to be as competitive. A lot of teams showed up and made themselves and made a statement into their conferences and in the region themselves. Uh, A couple surprises that we saw, you know, very hard-hitting games of football that we follow. It's been a very good week. Um, a lot of teams are, are you kind of see it now that the hard work's starting to pay off. The the rust is off. They're starting to kind of click and execute a little bit better, and it's, and it's starting to become fun to watch. And I know we'll get to this later on in the show, but, man, we were in, we thought we were in for a dogfight for the game of the week, and, and we were very surprised at the outcome of that game of the week, and I'm sure – our fans out there did read about it on our website, sportsontappodcast.com. Uh, again, just before we kick off the show here, want to make sure you guys are following us on Twitter at SOT Podcast, at our website, sportsontappodcast.com, and on on YouTube under Sports on Tap. Um, iTunes, wherever you get podcasts, you, you can follow us. You can listen to your favorite high school sports. Again, you can also reach out to us at sportsontappodcast at gmail.com. Uh, this goes out to high school st- statisticians who have – that's a hard word to say. Stat- statistic- St- statisticians. Yes, say it ten times fast. Statisticians. <laughs> Feel free to send us your weekly uh, weekly stats of your game. We'd be happy to read them on over the air or the po- over the podcast. Uh, but, Rob, we are, you know, a, a, we are a man down right now. Yeah. We are, we are, we are trying our best to, you know, we're going to try our best to do this, to do this GCC recap the way Josh Jeffy would do it. Yeah. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to mispronounce all the names, uh, but <laughs> we're going to we're going to give it a shot. But a lot of cross crossover games with within the conferences. I know you specifically covered the the Southwestern Conference. They kick into conference play this past week, so your games got whittled down. But a lot of cross conferences. And when Ed gets when we get Ed on the phone, he'll go over the Great Lakes Conference. You and I will double will tag team yep. the uh, 
the GCC to for Josh, and then we'll go into the Southwestern Conference and catch up with the Suburban League uh, to see how week two went. A lot of surprises and a lot of interesting storylines as well. Yeah, no doubt about that. And we also have our Coach of the Week poll, which, oh, I mean, I can't believe how many people came out. We had 326 votes and the final results are in, and we'll give you uh, the results later on in the show. Um, probably about 8.45, uh, maybe 9 o'clock, somewhere in there. Um, we'll go over the coaches poll at that time, go over our play of the, player of the week. Uh, we'll give a poll on that as well. Um, we'll be doing that new this week. Tell you about our game of the week. Coming up. Yep. Uh, yeah, our game of the week coming up, and also go over our game of the week recaps. Um, but – to start, we're going to um, start with uh, the Great Lakes Conference, and we'll be doing that here in a minute or so. Um, and we're going to get Ed on the phone here. And uh, then after the Great Lakes, we'll talk a little Greater Cleveland Conference um, before we take our first break. So um, we'll we get Ed on the phone here. We've got a lot to do. And, yeah, a lot to get over, uh, lot a lot to lot, talk about. A lot to talk about. You know, one of the things that struck me, and, again, I'm, Josh is not here to make fun of me for saying one of the things, but you know, one of the, uh, we were talking about this at the game of the week was, you know, a lot of the a lot of the intensities picked up, and it's it, you know, it's it's definitely interesting to see how that happens, you know, from week to week. You, you know, we talked about in week one's game of the week where it was more of a sloppy game. Things were things were starting, to, you know, execution wasn't there. Uh, but the one thing that I you know I noticed at least coming into week two was execution at least offensively became a lot crisper and there's a lot of things that you know got cleaned up I think for around the league and we see that coming back um, you know is it's something that we have to continue to you know evolve as the you know execution is going to get more crisp it's going to get more tight they're going to want people to have uh, you know a, an idea of what these offenses are going to be like because defense you know wins championships it's true but they do have the ability to you know kind of overtake in week one because they don't have the ability to you know they, they they capitalize on maybe things not being as crisp because this is the first time they're talking about game speed now what we're going to do now is uh we are going to kick it on over to my former compadre my former compatriot my <laughs> former tag team partner uh in the suburban league we're going to talk to ed dick about and see how week two fared for teams in the great lakes conference ed how you doing tonight Pirates quarterback Braden Spieth 
threw and ran for a touchdown. The Valley Forge, they improved at 2-0 overall, 1-0 conference play. They will host Tarma in Week 3. Rocky River falls to 1-1 one one overall. They are 0-1 in the conference. They will travel to Fairview. Speaking of Fairview, Fairview travels to Parma to take on 0-1 Normandy. The Warriors took control of this game quite early. They had a kickoff return for a touchdown by Declan Jewett to open the game. Uh, the Invaders, they were only on the board with an 11-yard touchdown run by Victor Parasic to cut the Warrior lead to 14-6. Uh, that is about the closest they got as a Jewett added touchdown runs of 35 and 5 yards. The Warriors also scored twice on the defense on the, fence, on the defensive side of the fumble recoveries. 42 to 14 victory. The Warriors over the Invaders. Fairview improves a 1-1 overall, 1-0 in the conference. They will host Rocky River next week. The Invaders of Normandy, they fall to 0-2 overall, 0-1 in the conference. They will travel to Holy Name. Illyria Catholic, double champs of the GLC in 2018. They are 1-0. They hosted 1-0 Parma in their conference opener. The Panthers scored the first 33 points of this game, led by quarterback Steven Natalinski and running back Chris Jackson. They win 54-14 over the Redmen. Natalinski threw five touchdown passes. He hit four different players two of which were to Connor Strockley. Jackson scored in a 52-yard run and a 90-yard kickoff return. Uh, for the Redmond, Dominic Gallo did complete the touchdown pass to help him get on the board. Illyria Catholic improves to 2-0 and overall, 1-0 in conference play. They will travel to Bay in Week 3. Parma drops to 1-1 overall, 0-1 in the conference. They will take on Parma Heights Valley Forge. Just in case you're wondering, Rob, we are going to do the Buckeye Recap. Buckeye Recap. Buckeye Recap. Buckeye Recap is about <laughs> to happen as uh, part of our, quote-unquote, contractual, <laughs> contractual obligation to the GLC, quote-unquote, very, very loosely there. Uh, but the Buckeye Bucks, they are 0-1. They open up play in their new conference uh, against the 2018 co-champion Bay Rockets. They came into this game 1-0. Uh, they came to the Stein Gas Field in York Township right on 252. The Bucks wasted no time in his swing with the league. They jumped out to a 28 to nothing halftime lead over the Rockets. Senior running back Armando Nye rushed for two touchdowns. Quarterback Jacob Durkee and Rob Bonanza followed with touchdowns of their own in the first half. The Bucks blow out the Rockets 38 to 7. Wow. Nye finished with 99 yards on 18 carries with his two touchdowns. Durkee rushed for 187 yards. And not to forget the kickers here, Clay, Clay Gumpelman came out of 36 yard field goal to lead the Bucks. Defensively, that defense led by former uh, Brunswick head coach and current defensive coordinator Luke Beal, uh, they held the Bucks. Uh, the Bucks held Bates to just 137 yards in this contest, just 42 in the first half when the game was still in doubt. Uh, so a, a total team effort here by the by the Bucks, both offensively and defensively, uh, for this victory. Buckeye improves to one and one. Overall, 1-0 in the conference. They're going to travel to Cloverleaf to finish their non-conference schedule in Week 3. Bay is 1-1 one one overall, 0-1 in the conference. They will take on defending Green Lake Conference co-champion Illyria Catholic in Week 3. My players and my, my, my coach of the week, as uh, you guys, uh, as the sport of Earth, have seen on the uh, G&G Fitness Equipment poll, is uh, Dave Lasiewicz from Fairview with their uh, big victory over Normandy. Our player of the week will be Steven Navalinsky, the quarterback for Leary Catholic. Five touchdown passes, uh, plenty of chuckle and milk coming his way in, in Mr. Duffy's terms. He is the player of the week in the Great Lakes Conference, and I will uh, be able to push for him to be the player of the week overall out of our conferences. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. I mean, five touchdowns and – and good for Fairview as well. I mean, very impressive. But I was surprised with the Buckeye Bay game a little bit. I thought uh, that uh, that would be a really close game because both teams are just uh, very physical and, and always at the top of their divisions. Agreed. Agreed. Um, and we're, we're, uh, you know, while the, uh, other, while, while the, the, the game of the week was going on and we were following along with the, uh, you know, with the updates at this game, Quite a surprise. Uh, I mean, I, I have heard from uh, from a couple of sources close to Bay that they, uh, you know, that they, this this may not be 
the best of, uh, they may not be into the, to the level where, they, where they've been um, in the past. Uh, Coach Ron Rudd knows what he's doing out there, though. Um, and he ran into a very, they ran into a very good Buckeye team. I mean, Buckeye is no joke. There's a reason why they won multiple conference championships in a row. And I, I have no doubt that they could regroup. Uh, they, this is a team that they haven't seen before. And when they get back in the conference play against teams they are more familiar with, um, I have no doubt that they uh, will, will, I think they will store order in, 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 in quick fashion. It doesn't get any easier, though. They're playing O'Leary Catholic next week um, in the Battle of Coach Champions from 2018. Uh, so we'll see how they bounce back. O'Leary Catholic is rolling right now. They've put up a lot of points in their last two games. And uh, given how Bay's defense uh, didn't particularly hold Buckeye to uh, – to the lowest of yards and or points. I'm interested in seeing what Stephen Nadalinski can do against the Bay defense here uh, coming up in week three. Uh, so right now, uh, overall in the standings for the Great Lakes Conference, Farmer High Valley Forge and O'Leary Catholic are both 2-0. and They are both 1-0 in conference play. There is a host. Uh, pretty much everybody else is 1-1 one one overall, uh, except for Normandy. They are 0-2. Carmel Heights Holy Name has yet to play a conference game, but uh, they have since they have concluded their non-conference schedule. They have conference games all the way throughout. Um, everybody else will have at least one non-conference game as the season uh, as the season progresses. So, uh, very very competitive start to the, to the year. Um, I'm looking to see how the conference how the conference games are going to shake out here in the next couple of weeks, um, especially with the newcomers. You know, Fairview and Buckeye both won their games. They're at the top of the standings for the later Kevin Valley Forge right now. Um, so I'm, to, I'm, I'm interested in seeing how they will compete as this conference schedule uh, progresses here. Well, Ed, great job on the Great Lakes Conference. We always uh, were excited to cover them, and I know on Twitter we had um, some Buckeye fans really excited about us covering the Great Lakes uh, Conference now, and, and overall we had uh, a lot of positive feedback. So great job on your uh, you know conference uh, recap and uh, we'll talk to you real soon. Sounds good. Um, uh, just for everyone who's uh, listening, I would highly recommend you listen to the, <laughs> to the Game of the Week recap. Uh, yeah. It went quite well, uh, quite well for those of us who uh, wear blue and white. I'll just say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah, no doubt about that. Uh, that was a heck of a game, and honestly, we'll just say that uh, – you know, we, we said it was a bit surprising. We didn't give any details, of it, but other than uh, it was a little bit surprising uh, how well one team played, we'll say that. The exact phrase was, we thought we were getting one thing and we got something else. That's a very good way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> I but, know how to tease, boys. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, great job, Ed, and uh, we'll talk to you next week. All right, thanks, guys. Have a great, uh, have a great rest of the show, and uh, make sure you listen. Make sure you vote on the coach of the week, and uh, stay tuned to see if I know who the players of the week are in your respective conferences. Absolutely, thanks, thanks Ed. Ed. All right, see you guys. All right, that's our own Ed Dick, and a great job of him covering uh, the Great Lakes Conference. And uh, you know, I was a little surprised. Josh was at the Buckeye Bay game. Did a great job posting on uh, our Twitter, which is at SOT Podcast. And mm -hmm. overall, I was just, uh, I guess I was a little bit surprised. Um, I mean, Bay is a very good team, and they, they're they always right there. And I thought that maybe it would be a little bit closer, but Buckeye is a, a really a powerhouse of a school when it comes to football. Yeah, we, we talked about it. I think last year or when this was announced that the Buckeye was going to join the Great Lakes Conference and taking a step up and playing Bay Village your second week, your first conference game, you know, coming in as defending co-champions with Elyria Catholic, that's a test for any team. And, you know, as much as people say, well, this may not be the best Bay's ever been, it's still Bay Village. And Bay Village is a respectable program throughout Northeast Ohio. They're con they're consistently in the t discussion for uh, – you know, playoffs and, and, you know, deep runs in those playoffs. So, you know, Buckeye passed its first test. Now, you look at Bay Village, you look at Elyria Catholic, and you look at Normandy, and you look at Fairview Park. And right now, I mean, we're very early in the season, but those are the top four teams, really, uh, in that division. You know, Rocky River's there. Nor you know, uh, not Normandy. I'm sorry, not Normandy, but Parma. Yeah, you're looking at Parma. Parma, sorry, Parma. I get those two mixed up because they're all they all share the same field. Yeah, Parma Valley Forge. <laughs> yeah, Valley Forge. That's what I meant. Um, 
Who else? Parma Valley, Forge and Normandy. Padua. Uh, there's a Holy, Holy Name. Name. Yeah, yeah so, they're all I mean, right there. There's a lot. There's a lot out there. They, that conference, to me, again, it's new to us, so it's kind of a learning curve. And Ed's doing a great job of covering that for us. But we're we're kind of seeing the tea leaves a little bit. They're starting to kind of come into focus. Hopefully. Um, Oh wow! Oh, you know, you're already tired, man. I was up late. I We're was just up getting late. started. I got fantasy football on the brain, man. I was up late watching to make sure I uh, secured victories this week. But uh, yeah, so let's uh, so let's go ahead and jump into the GCC and let's see if we can do this as admirably as as Mr. Yeah. Josh Jeffy can do. Um, I'm just waiting for the text saying you're doing it wrong. You're doing <laughs> it wrong. But we'll we'll start off and uh, Rob, I'll start off with some of the GCC games here, and we'll start off first with. Uh, Solon traveling to Twinsburg. Uh, this was Solon's game from the minute the ball from the minute the game kicked off. Pat McQuaid, quarterback for Solon, threw for 268 yards and four touchdowns. Uh, Solon, Solon running back, wide receiver. I'm sorry, wide receiver Grant McCurry had five or si- five receptions for 187 yards and three touchdowns. Solon running back Khalil Eichelberger. Had 91 yards and a touchdown, and the defense for Solon held uh, Twinsburg to just 57 yards rushing on the night. Solon rolls to a 46 to six win over wow. Twinsburg. They improved to two and zero. Twinsburg is now one and one. Solon will go and play another suburban league team, suburban league national division in week three as they go to Stowe. Uh, Twinsburg will go and play will play host to American Division team Aurora. Moving on, Euclid welcomed in Caricius from uh, New York a team from New York and the welcome wagon was out but it was not a very fun ride if you're a fan of Caricius New York. <laughs> Euclid s- completely dominated the game. Uh, Euclid quarterback Dion Valentine threw for 332 yards passing and five touchdown passes in wow. the game euclid routes the team from new york carcius 63 to 35 euclid is now two and oh they have a very interesting matchup in week three as they travel to play canton mckinley oh, another wow. another a top a top 25 matchup in the area it should be a good one in week three moving on to a couple of other ones we have strongsville traveling in to take on hudson and guys this was a great Great game. This game went into overtime. Strongsville just edging out Hudson, 35-28. Running back Garrett Clark had 160 for, I'm sorry, Garrett Clark for Strongsville had 161 yards, 161 yards rushing and the game-winning touchdown. Hudson quarterback Jacob Paltani went 7-16 with two t- passing touchdowns and a rushing touchdown strongsville is 2-0 and they go to take on the brexville broadview heights bees <laughs> in week three they will host brexville broadview heights hudson is now one and i'm sorry oh and two uh they will host brush in week three they they should be looking for a win in that obviously they're oh and two on the season my final game that i'm going to cover is uh medina versus highland and guys medina Took it to Highland, thirty-one to nothing. They Medina quarterback Ryan Gillespie had three hundred and fifty-five yards and three touchdowns on the night. Medina completely sh- has shut out opponents since the second half of their first week game. They have not allowed a point scored on them since week one in the second quarter. Wow. Uh, Highland quarterback Bryce Prophet did not have a good night. 12 of 21 passing, 69 yards, and an interception. They couldn't get any points on the board. He did have 63 yards rushing. Medina is 2-0. They traveled to play Stowe. No, that's not right. Who, Medina? Yes. Medina plays... Well, we'll, f- we'll figure it out. This is this is what happens when I don't have <laughs> enough time to prep. Um, <laughs> Highland will play... Well, oh, we'll travel. Oh, I'm sorry. We'll travel to play crosstown rival North Royalton uh, in week three. We'll figure out who Medina is going to play. I'm pretty sure it's Stowe, but I may have screwed that up, and it's not the first time for that. I'm going to kick it over to Rob Troutman to cover the back half of the GCC and uh, respond to a text from Josh telling me I'd screwed up his conference. <laughs> 
Hey, you know what? We're doing this on the fly, and it's and it's going well so far. So let's continue with the uh, one wheel Greater Cleveland Conference, uh, where Illyria took on Bedford, and Illyria was looking to break a 15-game losing streak under their new head coach Devlin Culliver, and uh, he knew about this streak, but you know, obviously, you're not going to talk to your kids, uh, you know, about the losing streak. You just want to go out there and. and have them play hard, and the Pioneers, they did that. They trailed 6 nothing at half, holding Bedford in this game to 196 yards of total offense, and 125 of it came on the ground. And it was in the third quarter that Pine, the Pioneers, they broke through on a two-yard touchdown run by Jesse Stevens, and Carter Pycroft kicked the point after. The Pioneers led 7-6, to six, and it was the Elyria defense, though, that had the last stand, knocking the ball out of Bedford quarterback, Deshaun dashes hands with Jazarian Drummer recovering for Elyria, getting the win as the Pioneers. They snapped their 15-game losing streak and improved to 1-1 one one on the season. They win 7-6 to six in this game. Um, they take on their arch rival, Lorraine, next. And, uh, you know, those teams right next door and looking uh, to clash here in Week 3. Uh, as for... Uh, as for Bedford, you know, they are always a very tough team, but Elyria playing well. They lost their first week to Midview. They get a 76 win over a very good Bedford team. So congratulations to Devlin Culliver, the new head coach of Elyria, and the Pioneers uh, breaking that streak. And let's hope they get a, a little bit of a win streak here as they continue to improve. Uh, Benedictine, they took on Shaker Heights. The Red Raiders came into this game. Uh, looking to uh, continue uh, their winning ways on the season is Benedictine. They were out to a quick start, though it's fourteen to nothing when the Red Raiders um, answered with a touchdown pass from Diaz to wide receiver Jordan Fuller. The extra point though was no good and blocked as it was fourteen to six here at the half. And Benedictine they would score twenty one unanswered points and would run away with it in the second half, winning big 35-6 to in this game. The Red Raiders, they fall to 1-1 one and one and will take on Cleveland Heights as Benedictine. They improved to 2-0 and oh and will play Cleveland Central Catholic. Um, but uh, Shaker Heights, Red Raiders, really, Benedictine's always a very tough team. Um, and uh, they really took it to Shaker Heights in this game. Yeah, and the big the big game that everyone's going to talk about, first I'm going to go back and say that Medina will host Wadsworth in week three. Okay, um, big game yeah, there. That's what, again, I can't read my own writing. But, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the big game in the GCC or the big team in the GCC was Menor taking on St. Ignatius. Yeah. And after coming off a very big win over St. Ed's and now having St. Ignatius, Menor had an opportunity to really stamp – the region with the the Menor Cardinal symbol here, if they could take down two of the big parochial schools in the area. Uh, and they ended up doing so. And, and, Rob, I think you have a little bit of information as to how they did that. Yeah, it was uh, four touchdowns by senior running back Brian Trobel uh, that powered Menor to a 38-31 home win. And uh, three turnovers forced in the second half by the Menor defense made – a comeback, they're 14 points down in this game at home, and they still got a big-time win. And uh, Trobel and junior cornerback Ian Kipp, they really did a great job, especially with the offensive line protecting for them. Um, the, the, the offensive line, I thought, uh, really protected and, and gave them a running game as well. They had 267 yards um, with Trobel rushing 27 times for 133 yards, and Ian Kipp uh, gaining 134 yards on 15 attempts. So what a game for Menor on the ground. Uh, for St. Ignatius, Connor Camille, um, who had two touchdowns on an 84-yard kickoff return, and he also had an 88-yard uh, return off a block field goal. Uh, but it was senior running back Jack Welsh. He added 101 yards on 20 ca carries for St. Ignatius. And, and like I said, Ignatius had a 31-17 lead um, in the third quarter. But you can never take it easy on this Menor team. There's just so much talent. They're very physical. Um, their offensive line is huge. Mm -hmm. And they know how to protect the quarterback and give good lanes for the running backs. And it showed in this game. I also think a lot of it had to do with 
they've been there before. They were there last week. They were down to St. Ed's, and they ended up having to come back. So it wasn't being down, obviously, not something that they, you know, wanted to be, obviously. But it was something that they weren't unfamiliar with. So they didn't yeah. panic, and they stuck to their – their 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 guns a little bit and you know what a lot of this has to do you know all of the stories coming out of mentor is this is Trivis, coach trevisano's last year this is his last hurrah so these seniors this team wants to give wants him to go out as a winner and that's been the kind of the message from the mentor you know the mentor program is we want to let coach trevisano we want to make sure coach trevisano goes out a winner as he you know steps down from being the the head football coach which he's been there for 23 years so he's been there for a very long time um, so there's a lot going on, and what these two wins do, one, it just, I mean, their computer points go up through the roof. Oh, absolutely. Through the roof. But also, it puts the region on notice that, guess what, the road to the state championship is going to go through Menor. And, you know, one the Menor has an opportunity. They've set themselves up beautifully to kind of control. I know we're way too early. We're two weeks in, but these are two huge non-conference wins that build a resume for Menor to get in. You know, should things go – if things were to go awry in the GCC, I think these these two wins here allow a team like Menor to really have a great resume coming down to week 9 or 10. Do I think they're going to need it? Probably not. I yeah. think we're going to see a situation where Menor may be the 1 or 2 seed going into their particular region. Um, but these are fantastic wins. as a, In a young season, these are galvanizing wins. They faced adversity. They came back two weeks in a row against a very good opponent, against a very worthy opponent, and now they move on to pl- to uh, take on, I believe they play. Let's take a look here because uh, I don't even know if I, I saw who they play next. We're uh, really prepared. I know. I'll have to look that up. Right now. <laughs> That's all right. Well, what we'll do is we'll take a step away. We'll yeah. take a quick break. Um, oh, actually, wait. I'm sorry. Let's let's before we do that, let's let's announce our uh, GCC coach. Oh yeah, of the week, and then our uh, our player of the week. I think it's got to be Menor's uh, running back. Yeah, you want to you want to go with uh, Brian Trouble? Yeah, four touchdowns. Four touchdowns by uh, Brian Trouble. He had a heck of a game. He had 27 rushes for 133 yards and four touchdowns on the day. So Brian Trouble will yep. be our player of the week for the Greater Cleveland Conference. And the coach of the week um, was also in our poll. We'll give, uh, I guess we'll, um, our, our game of the week, in the it was almost in the Greater Cleveland Conference, but uh, it was Brunswick taking on uh, North Royalton. And we'll get to that a little bit later in the show, but uh, we'll tell you our uh, coach of the week when uh, that comes up. Yep. Because, uh, he, what a game. What and, a game. And we'll go Absolutely. over that. What a, what a performance. Yeah, say. to say the least. So right now we'll step away. We'll take a short break. And when we come back, we'll go over the Southwestern Conference, the Suburban League, and also coming up our G&G Fitness Coach of the Week. Uh, we had a poll on Twitter, 326 votes there. We'll tell you who our Coach of the Week is and also – uh, we'll give you our player of the week in, in each respected conference as well. So don't go anywhere where Sports on Tap is coming right back. SportsOnTapPodcast.com, the place to go where you can listen to past shows, read featured articles, check out all of our social media updates, plus much, much more. SportsOnTapPodcast.com, the official website of Sports on Tap. RRT Productions specializing in creating sports recruiting videos for all high school athletes. Want to play at the next level? Promote your talents with a video to send colleges. Affordable, experienced, and a high-quality video. Make us your local video production company. Visit our website, rrt-productions.com, and contact us today. RRT Productions. We shoot. We edit. You win. Want to be featured on Sports on Tap? Get in front of different age groups in the local community. Contact us at Sports on Tap Podcast at gmail.com for more information. Listen 
listen to our shows live on Mixer or join us the first Monday of every month at Z's Cream and Bean, located at 2706 Boston Road in Hinkley. Want to listen to past shows? Go to our YouTube page or website, www.sportsontappodcast.com. Listen to our shows live on Mixer or join us the first Monday of every month at Z's Cream and Bean, located at 2706 Boston Road in Hinkley. Want to listen to past shows? Go to our YouTube page or website, www.sportsontappodcast.com. No matter the season, it's always the right time for Z's Cream and Bean. Whether you want to warm up with some of their delicious soups, chilies, or coffees, or sample from their delicious selection of ice cream, shakes, and other cool treats, Z's Cream and Bean has you covered. Visit them at 2706 Boston Road in Hinkley, Ohio, and tell them the guys at Sports on Tap sent you. And welcome back to Sports on Tap. It's our Ohio High School football coverage. Week two game recaps. I'm Rob Trout and we have Sean Duffy. Ed Dick joined us earlier in the show going over the Great Lakes Conference. Josh Jeffy out on assignment right now. We just went through the Greater Cleveland Conference, uh, which had some really impressive games. And you know one fact I didn't mention were six teams are 2-0 and in the Greater Cleveland Conference the uh, other two there are uh, one and one on the season. Very interesting. So uh, you, we uh, we say we did the GCC, and I think we can safely assume we attempted to do the GCC. We made yeah, a we did our best. Effort. I think you know we 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 put ourselves out there. Um, Josh, please don't dock me my pay for screwing up. <laughs> Thanks. Well, well, Josh is, is obviously a great. We're, we all are comfortable um, in our conferences, and uh, he always does a great job with that. And, uh, you know, we we uh, did our best. So now what we're going to do is get in. I did in, my best. That's right, man. You know, you can do what you can do. True. Uh, let's get into the uh, Southwestern Conference where the North Ridgeville Rangers, uh, they took on the Midview Middies as they traveled right down the road and a little bit of a – uh, rivalry here, but right before halftime, a big play by Midview sophomore quarterback Ethan Surdock as he threw a Hail Mary 50 yards down the field, and it was caught for a touchdown right before half. Midview led 16-7 to at halftime. They would stay in control in this game throughout, and they would get a big 30-14 to win over the North Ridgeville Rangers. The Rangers, though, they had at least three drives of nine or more plays in this game, um, were unable to punch them in. But it was North Ridgeville. Some pretty impressive stats is Caden Masterson, 16 of 30. He was the quarterback for 164 yards, had two touchdowns and an interception. Uh, Shane Swindig, the running back, 27 carries for 108 yards. He also caught the ball three times for 18. And Mason Grow, five receptions, 64 yards, and a touchdown. For Midview, it was quarterback Ethan Surdock. He had 13 of 19 for 226, two touchdowns, and he also had nine carries for 28 yards. Um, also, uh, Gill for Midview had uh, a few carries for a touchdown, but had four receptions for 101 yards. And Newton also uh, a wide receiver for Midview, six receptions, 105 yards. He had a touchdown and also an interception for Midview as he plays defense as well. The Midview Middies, they now tie their win total from last year, improving to 2-0 and on the season as they will travel to Amherst coming up in Week 3. North Ridgeville, they fall to 0-2 and as they travel to North Olmstead. Speaking of those Eagles, they traveled to Westlake. It was North Olmstead taking on Westlake. And North Olmstead, they were leading 18-13 to at halftime behind Anthony Guerico's solid play, and he had three touchdowns in the first half. For Westlake, it was Dylan Bednar's two scores in the first half for Westlake that kept the Demons uh, pretty close early on. Quarterback Travis Munkin for Westlake and wide receiver Dylan Bednar, they're a combination for the Demons that uh, are going to be fun to watch this season. 
In the second half, though, it was all Eagles outscoring the Demons 28-7. to And Anthony Guerquio uh, led the Eagles in scoring with six touchdowns. He had 12 of 18 passing for 209 yards, two touchdowns, and then rushed 13 times for 81 yards and four touchdowns. And last year, uh, Guerquio, uh, he had played in the defensive backfield, and now he made the conversion uh, to quarterback and a great win uh, for North Olmstead as Westlake, they fall to 0-2 and two and will host Olmstead Falls as North Olmstead improves to 1-1, one and, one and they'll host North Ridgeville. Amherst at Firelands, and Amherst, they jumped out early and dominated uh, from the start in this game. Um, as it was running back Tory Weatherspoon's night with Jonathan West injured the starting running back. He ran for 126 yards and three touchdowns on the night. For Amherst, it was their quarterback, Tyler Brezina. Uh, he had 15 of 27 for 176 yards and three touchdowns. So Tory Weatherspoon with 126 yards and three touchdowns. And, and uh, the quarterback of Tyler Brezina, they were a combination uh, to be reckoned with is Amherst. They improved at 2-0, and and they will host Midview next. So that's a really good game, both uh, teams 2-0 and uh, coming into this one. Olmstead Falls at Berea Midpark, and the Bagley Cup was on the line in this rivalry, and Berea Midpark, they would score first with sophomore quarterback Luke Devins to wide receiver D'Angelo Borders. Devins accounted for 224 yards and two touchdowns in this game. For Olmstead Falls, they would answer in the first quarter with a touchdown or with touchdown runs by Brennan Stang and Devontae Boyd, and they would take a 14-7 lead in this game. And at halftime, the score was 21-21, a very close game. And then in the second half, Olmstead Falls, Olmstead Falls, they would score 15 unanswered and win 36-21 to in this game. The Olmstead uh, Falls ground game, like usual, they would dominate in this game, and they would improve to 2-0 and and will travel to Westlake as Berea Midpark. They drop to 0-2 and and will host Avon Lake coming up. Avon traveling to Lorraine, and, you know, this for sure we thought would be a really good game, and, Lorraine, they would jump out to lead first on their opening drive, but Avon would come right back with running back Nick Parasek. Uh, he would answer with a 74-yard touchdown run. Quarterback Danny Zay uh, would then find Joey Lance. Zay would throw three touchdown passes in this game and pass for 217 yards. As running back Nick Parasek, uh, he would run for 128 yards and two touchdowns in this game. He also caught two passes for 46 yards, including a 12-yard uh, scoring grab there. Avon wins big, 52-28 to in this game. Avon now 2-0 and and will travel to Lakewood next. Avon Lake, and Sean knows about Clinton Massey. This game would come down... Uh, to the final buzzer in this one is Harry Hebert. He was back kicking field goals again, this time from 34 yards out as the Shoreman uh, went into half leading 10-7 to in this game, a low-scoring game, but it was junior running back Gage Dusler. Uh, he scored twice for Avon Lake in the second half. Clinton Massey, though, they would score with 34 seconds left in the game, and they elected to go for two in the win in this game. Uh, but fell short in the Shoreman. They escaped with a 24-23 to win um, at Clinton Massey, and they get their first win of the season, and are uh, one and one for uh, the Shoreman as Clinton Massey, they fall to 1-1 one and one on the season as well as Avon Lake. They'll travel to Berea Midpark uh, next. Not much, uh, couldn't find much on this game, but it was Lakewood and Garfield Heights, and Lakewood was in this game um, up until half, and then Garfield Heights in the second half just ran away with it a little bit as Garfield Heights gets a 49-28 to win over the Rangers, and the Rangers will host Avon next. But Garfield Heights a very good team. And, you know, one thing I like to see is the Lakewood Rangers, they're putting up more points this year, and I feel like they're competing more uh, than last year. Last year I thought, you know, right from the get-go it seemed like uh, – it was pretty much over right away, but you know they're really competing this year and playing hard. Um, their last year in the Southwestern Conference, but my Southwestern Conference Player of the Week goes to Anthony Guerquio of North Olmstead uh, for the Eagles. He led the Eagles in scoring with six touchdowns. He had twelve of eighteen passing for two hundred and nine yards, 
two touchdowns and rushed 13 times for 81 yards and four touchdowns. Uh, last year, again, he played defense. He's converting into a quarterback, and he's uh, a one-man wrecking crew for the Eagles, um, and he is my player of the week. And my coach of the week that was in the coaches poll that everybody saw was head coach of the Olmstead Falls Bulldogs, uh, Tom DeLuca. You know, with everything the Bulldogs have been going through, they lost a lot of seniors last year. Um, and they're, they're not skipping a beat, though. They're still, uh, you know, they come out and win their first two games uh, versus Brexville. You know, they were down in that game. They came back, got a big win there, and then uh, versus a very good Berea Mid Park team, uh, they get a win there. So start off the season 2-0, and and they'll continue. So uh, congratulations to Olmstead Falls uh, head coach Tom DeLuca. He was my coach of the week in the Southwestern Conference. And my player of the week was Anthony Guerquio of the North Olmstead Eagles, the quarterback there, six touchdowns, and a very impressive performance. Very impressive performance. Uh, a lot of surprises there. I was surprised to see the Avon Lake-Clinton Massey game. Um, just because I know Clinton Massey – has a good uh, a program coming from the Dayton area. Avon taking it to Lorraine. I think we're seeing Avon kind of make that transition. It was a low scoring, close game in Week One against Avon Lake. They didn't put it. They weren't as I talked earlier in the show. I think Week One to Week Two is where you see the biggest change in execution. Um, they have a little bit more film to go off of. They have game speed. They have an understanding of what's going on. So I think Avon settling into being with exactly what we thought they were. Um, going to be a good team, even, you know, missing Ryan Malloy, but r- really relying on Parasek. Um, yeah. You know, still a little bit surprised that Berea Mid Park is, is not scoring as much as they did last year. Um, you know, there's some obvious reasons for that, but, you know, that's a bit, that's a bit surprising. Uh, North Ridgeville, you know, after, after really having a bad second half week one, you thought maybe they'd turn it around. Unfortunately, they they ran into a, a, a really good Midview team, an up and coming Midview team, and that's a rivalry game. So you know that's that's tough to to really you know to win, especially on the road at Midview. It's tough to do, uh, but they'll we'll see if they can bounce back. You know, Westlake. I think you're I I, th- I think you're right on the money there, Rob. That that duo uh, that you that you mentioned of Westlake is going to be fun to watch as they progress. Um, and you know that your your player of the week. Um, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. Yeah, name. no, I was struggling. So if <laughs> if anybody mur- has I will that murder that name, <laughs> Guerquio, I Guerquio. believe, but I could be wrong. That's just uh, but you know, uh, looking yeah, at that we was don't an have pronunciation. Performance and a great you know pick, and like you said, Olmstead Falls got to win. Yeah, uh, and you know that's there's a lot going on. There's a lot to overcome. And that's what we talk about when we talk about coaching and and things like that. The, what they do to get their team ready to perform on Friday nights. You know, every coach works hard. We're, we're going to, I'll say that to the end, every head coach in our divisions, any head coach that takes time out of their day to coach young men is doing their best, but some, you know, have, the results kind of speak for themselves a little bit. We'll go from there. And we want to remind everybody, go to sports on tap podcast.com for all of our stories. Um, we also post everything, uh, archived with these shows you can go back and listen there on our youtube page we're at sot podcast on twitter we're on facebook instagram um you can catch us pretty much everywhere itunes uh, you can go back and listen to these as well but our website is where kind of everything is we also put videos uh, up there so if you're looking for you know videos that are game of the week um, those are going to be up there or pictures josh did a great job with pictures if you go to our facebook page he had some great pictures from buckeye and bay yeah uh, this did. last week so go check those out as well but sean without further ado take away uh the suburban league american and national divisions here's sean duffy thanks rob and i'll take start in the national division as the brexville broadview heights b travel to green in week two and they were able to put the issues they had in week one to rest as they escaped with a 34 to 14 victory uh in week two quarterback joe labas had one passing touchdown and one rushing touchdown while running back garrett kubitz had three rushing touchdowns on the night Brexville is 1-1 one and one on the season. Cuyahoga Falls traveling into Akron Springfield looking to continue their, their winning ways from week one, and they rode the back again of Rod, Rob running back Rob Graves. That is so hard to say. <laughs> who ended up with 26 carries, 204 yards, two touchdowns on the ground, and three catches for 93 yards and one touchdown receiving. Rob, get, here's, a fa- here's a fact for you. In the first two games, Rob Graves has has scored ten total touchdowns on his own. 
Wow. That is a huge, huge accomplishment. Congratulations to him. Uh, Cuyahoga Falls, 2-0 and o for the first time in as long as we've been covering I mean, this division. Phenomenal. That's fantastic. Uh, they will look to continue their winning ways in Week 3. Strongsville-Hudson, we touched on it earlier. Really, really close overtime game. Hudson does fall 30 uh, to Strongsville, thirty-eight to twenty-five in overtime. Hudson falls to zero and two on the on the year. Uh, and then our next game would would see Brunswick and North Royalton. We'll get to that during the game of the week breakdown. Nordonia looking to bounce back from a week one loss. Com- went into Northridge and completely dominated this game. Running back Sal Perrine had three touchdowns on the ground, and quarterback Brandon Levac had two passing touchdowns. Nordonia, big, big winner, 51 to 10 over Woodridge. Nordonia improves to one and one. In a rematch of the week first week of the playoffs last year, Wadsworth traveled into Wooster, and this was a close game. All the way through, just like the playoff game was, but wide receiver Barrett Labus had a six had six receptions, 120 yards, and two touchdowns, and one of them being the game winning touchdown uh, to secure the 20 to 17 victory. Wadsworth quarterback Trey Schaefer finished the night with two passing touchdowns as well. Wadsworth two and zero again, big matchup coming up for them, and as they host two and zero or they travel to two and zero Medina. Stowe and Barberton. This was the crossover matchup for the National and American Division, and it was a great game. Stowe quarterback Owen Bainbridge went 14-22, 175 yards and three touchdowns. Stowe's running back Michael Acer had 104 yards and ran a rushing touchdown, while quarterback for the Magic's Chase Haywood finished the game 28 of 47, 320 yards, 327 yards, and three touchdowns. Stowe goes into Barberton on the night that they opened up their new field with the new field turf and gets a win, 34-21. The win snaps a 26-game regular season winning streak for the Magics. It was a huge, huge upset for the Stowe Monroe Falls Bulldogs. They are 2-0. Barberton is 1-1 in on the season. Wow. Uh, that was a fantastic game. It was a back-and-forth game. For the National Division, we spoke about it earlier. Solon went into Twinsburg, and Solon completely dominated that game 46-6. to uh, Moving on to the American Division, Aurora travels in to take on uh, Cuyahoga Valley Catholic Christian Academy, CVCA, uh, and... Thanks to an 86-yard kickoff return to open the game by wide receiver Johnny Pepish and an Alex Morgan rushing touchdown, Aurora escapes Week Two with a 14-7 victory over CVCA. A very low-scoring game uh, for that one, but again, a, an 86-yard kickoff return by Johnny pa- Johnny Pepish kind of gave Aurora an early lead, and they added to it, and they kind of withheld on the late comeback by CVCA. Uh, but Medina and Highland, we touched on it earlier. Quarterback Bryce Prophet just could not get anything going for the Hornets. Uh, ended up 12 of 21, 69 yards in an interception with 13 rushing yards, uh, 13 rushes for 46 yards. Copley traveling into Firestone. I'm sorry, Highland is 0 and 2 on the season. Uh, they look to bounce back in Week Three. Copley travels into Firestone, and quarterback Jackson Madden had three passing touchdowns and. Did all the field goal kicking for them and also added a 35-yard field goal as Copley smokes Firestone 52-12. to Copley is 1-1 one and one on the season. Revere traveling to East Lake North and Brandon Tricano had four touchdowns on the night. Two rushing and two receiving. And, not, and he finished the night with 21 rushes and 108 yards and two touchdowns as I mentioned. Nate Kolonowski, Kolonowski, I think is how you pronounce it, had three passing touchdowns on the night as well. Revere 2 and 0 as they have a 34 to 7 victory over East Lake North. Unfortunately for the Kent Roosevelt uh Rough Riders, they fall to 0 and 2 as Marlington comes into town and, and drops a 34 to 10 victory on top of them. They look to bounce back again in week 3. My last game for the American Division is Talmadge looking to come back from a week 1 loss as they travel into Ellet and quarterback Drew Cross had ended the night with I'm sorry, Talmadge quarterback, Talmadge quarterback Drew Cross 
ended the <laughs> the night <laughs> with 337 yards and four touchdowns, all of them coming in the first half. Three of those touchdown passes were over 50 yards, and the Talmadge defense sh- pitched a shutout in the first half, allowing only 13 points in the second half when it was a running clock. My national my national division player of the week is Stowe quarterback Owen Bainbridge, who finished the evening again with 14 of 22 passing, 175 yards and three touchdowns. Really was the leader going into Barberton, which is a big matchup for them. Uh, my American division player of the week is Brand, running back Brandon Tricano from Revere. Four touchdowns, two with 108 yards on the ground, two total touchdowns rushing, and two passing touchdowns. My coach of the week is uh, Revere coach Terry Sistone with from Revere. Again, a lot of changes happened with Revere late in the late in the summer um, that needed that had to come in, and he has really gotten that team focused. They've gotten that team to two and zero against a very good Buckeye team, and now uh, a pretty a, a very impressive outing against. Uh, East Lake North. Um, so, congratulations to Terry Sistone from Revere and Owen Bainbridge and Brandon Tricano from Stowe and Revere, respectively. A lot of interesting matchups coming into Week Three. I'm going to go through them here as we can, uh, so that way everyone knows. In the National Division, got my trusty, rusty piece of paper. <laughs> the Brexville Broadview Heights B. Bees travel to take on the Mustangs of Strongsville. Oh. Barberton at one and one will look to will look to face a hot Cuyahoga Falls team. Brush will travel in to take on Hudson. Highland will travel to North Royalton. Nordonia travels to Mayfield. Solon will host. I'm sorry. Stowe will host Solon. Aurora and Twinsburg meet up in a matchup. Uh, and finally, Wadsworth travels to Medina. In week three for the American division, as I mentioned, Aurora will face Twinsburg. Barberton will he- will head to Cuyahoga Falls. Copley will host will travel to Uniontown Lake Highland at North Royalton. Roosevelt will travel to Ravenna Coventry. I'm sorry. Talmadge will host Coventry and Revere will look to add to their winning total against CVCA. So, Rob, that is the suburban national and American division. Uh, that's. Week three lineup, and we've discussed all there is to fit, fit to print for the uh, Suburban League. So what is your takeaway from the Suburban League? Well, you know, first in the National Division, I mean, some of these matchups in week three, I, they're really intriguing to me. I mean, when you look at Barberton traveling to Cuyahoga Falls, I mean, that's going to be a true test for Cuyahoga Falls. You know, yeah. can they compete with, uh, you know, one of the teams that's been at the top? Especially with Barberton coming off a, a tough loss at yeah. home to open up at home. You to know. Stowe. And, you know, Stowe's going to host Solon. Yeah. I mean, so Stowe's coming off a win. They're going to host Solon. I think that's going to be a really good game. North Royalton and Highland, you know, both teams, um, you know, uh, coming off some – Interesting games, especially with North Royalton. Highland coming off a tough loss to Medina. Um, Aurora and Twinsburg. I mean, there's just some – Wadsworth and Medina is another one I think that's going to be – I mean, that's a Medina County showdown right there. And then in the in the American, I mean, Aurora and Twinsburg. Twinsburg coming off a tough loss after uh, getting an overtime win. Um, you know, you got some, some really good games overall with uh, Roosevelt versus Ravenna. Um, so it's going to be uh, it's going to be fun to to really go through uh, these games next week and see who's going to come out on top. But I think it's a uh, it's going to be a fun one to see. You know, I, I look at the schedule and I look at what this particular Hudson has gone through in the last two weeks. Two real close games against two really good opponents in in Solon and Strongsville. Now they get Brush, who you know is not may not be the same caliber as your Solons or your Strongsville. But it's going to be important that they rebound and they take care of business because now you know after this coming week it's going to be it's it's conference play, so they have a they have an opportunity to right the ship so to speak. So I, you know as much as we say oh wow it's a shock Hudson's zero and two it's really not they've played some really good quality opponents and they've been playing them tough and unfortunately the ball just you know didn't bounce their way and they didn't get the breaks they needed. Um, coaches would probably say that execution probably wasn't there on certain issues, but. You know Hudson's a team that I that I'll keep a, that I'm definitely keeping an eye on, but you know a team that's really, really starting to impress me is Revere. 
Um, you know, with oh, all yeah. they had to deal with in the off season and the fact that they're coming in and Brandon Tricano, Nate Kolonowski, both seniors, both in their last year, you know, they have an opportunity here to make some noise in this suburban American division. You know, Aurora is gettable. Barberton is there. Obviously Stowe showed the way there. Um, you know, Copley and Highland are, are, are right there. Talmadge is, is game, but I think Revere is my sleeper. And I say that I've said that a couple of years now because they're, they're non conference. If they get the right kind of, you know, momentum going into conference play, they could be a team that, that ends up being very good come the end of the year and be looking at a playoff spot. No, yeah, Revere, they always play Buckeye tough. It's always uh, a grind in those games, and they're just consistently good. I yeah. mean, every year they, they seem to – they're right there, and they, they play very tough in uh, physical football. So right now, Sean, what we're going to do after that, I mean, you, I think you need a little break I after do. Uh, after all that. It's a lot of games. I'm it's a lot of games. To, I'm looking mean, forward to conference play. <laughs> yeah, when I, I know that's what uh, – you always look forward to is the conference play when uh, games shrink a little bit and you're you still have some kind of breath left over yeah. after uh, doing all that. But uh, right now we'll step away. We'll take a short break, and uh, when we come back, we'll go over uh, the G and G Fitness Coach of the Week. Our poll was on Twitter at SOT Podcast. You probably saw it over three hundred and twenty six. I think votes were total, so over three hundred votes in that which is impressive. And we're also going to have a player of the week poll that uh, we gave you our player of the week in our respective conferences. We'll combine all of them for a poll and uh, see which player will be our overall player of the week. That will be also at SOT Podcast. We'll reveal our next game of the week. Where will we be at coming up this Friday? And also our game of the week recap, which featured the Brunswick Blue Devils and the North Royalton Bears. All that coming up. On Sports on Tap, don't go anywhere. SportsOnTapPodcast.com, the place to go where you can listen to past shows, read featured articles, check out all of our social media updates, plus much, much more. SportsOnTapPodcast.com, the official website of Sports on Tap. For up-to-the-minute info on local high school sports action, including photos, videos, and live updates, be sure to follow Sports on Tap on Twitter, Instagram, and like us on Facebook. RRT Productions, specializing in creating sports recruiting videos for all high school athletes. Want to play at the next level? Promote your talents with a video to send colleges affordable experienced and a high quality video make us your local video production company visit our website rrt-productions.com and contact us today rrt productions we shoot we edit you win Are you a business? Want to be featured on Sports on Tap? Get in front of different age groups in the local community. Contact us at sportsontappodcast at gmail.com for more information. Productions, specializing in creating sports recruiting videos for all high school athletes. Want to play at the next level? Promote your talents with a video to send colleges. Affordable, experienced, and a high quality video. Make us your local video production company. Visit our website, rrt productions.com, and contact us today. RRT Productions, we shoot, we edit, you win.
matter the season, it's always the right time for Z's Cream of Bean. Whether you want to warm up with some of their delicious soups, chilies, or coffees, or sample from their delicious selection of ice cream, shakes, and other cool treats, Z's Cream of Bean has you covered. Visit them at 2706 Boston Road in Hinkley, Ohio, and tell them the guys at Sports on Tap sent you. coverage of Cavs, Indians, and Browns, check out NEOSportsInsiders.com. NEOSportsInsiders.com brings you breaking news, opinions, and video from all things related to your favorite Cleveland sports teams. Like us on Facebook and follow at NEOSportsInsiders on Twitter for live updates from all the games. NEOSportsInsiders.com, bringing you the best in Northeast Ohio sports coverage. Are you a business? Want to be featured on Sports on Tap? Get in front of different age groups in the local community. Contact us at Sports on Tap Podcast at gmail.com for more information. Productions, specializing in creating sports recruiting videos for all high school athletes. Want to play at the next level? Promote your talents with a video to send colleges. Affordable, experienced, and a high quality video. Make us your local video production company. Visit our website, rrt-productions.com, and contact us today. RRT Productions, we shoot, we edit, you win. of the season it's always the right time for z's cream of bean whether you want to warm up with some of their delicious soups chilies or coffees or sample from their delicious selection of ice cream shakes and other cool treats z's cream of bean has you covered visit them at 2706 boston road in hinkley ohio and tell them the guys at sports on tap sent you And welcome back to Sports on Tap. It's our week two game recaps for our Ohio high school football show. We had a chance to go over the Great Lakes Conference with Ed. We also covered the Greater Cleveland Conference. Me and Sean did that. As, uh, Josh is out on assignment today. And then we covered uh, the Southwestern Conference and the Suburban League. And uh, now it's uh, time to go over our game of the week last week, which was the Brunswick Blue Devils and the North Royalton Bears. And once we uh, go over that, we can give our 
uh, go over our coaches poll, which was our coach of the week, in which it featured uh, Mark Pinzoni, the head coach of Brunswick. It was uh, Terry Sistone from Revere, Tom DeLuca, uh, the head coach at Olmstead Falls, and Dave Lakovic from Fairview. So, Sean, let's uh, get to our game of the week. And, you know, this was a fun game to be a part of. Um, Brunswick came into this game 1-0. I, I, yeah, I, I. it was a fun game, I think, for... for well, the first uh, for, start of it. No, for three-fourths of our of our podcast team, uh, given their... But we don't I'll, I'll, root for. You, I mean, you, you have to not, stay in the middle. Here's what you're, here's what I'll say. You're not biased in your coverage, but you're biased in who you root for. And I get it. I would be the same way. Um, but first, I want to thank um, North Royalton. They yes. were a great host, absolutely. Um, and having us, you know, I was on the field. Sean was in the press box. You know, I think his feet were up on the table. He was eating pizza, wings, bonbons. And, really, yeah. I had my nails done. It was a good time. <laughs> But uh, Brunswick came in this game 1-0, and and North Royalton, they came off of a big win at North Ridgeville to start the season. And, Sean, really in this game, I mean, there was a 63-yard scoring drive that was capped off by a 33-yard touchdown pass in. You know, you hear of uh, junior quarterback Jacob Charette, um, and he uh, threw it to senior wide receiver Jack Miller, and Brunswick was off and running, and it was a 7 nothing lead with uh, 8.55 left in the first quarter. And I think that really set the tone um, in this game because they, they scored really quick. And Jacob Charette, what can you say about this guy? I mean, he can run, he can pass. It seemed like he did it all on this night. He he had himself a night, and, you know, it was one of those 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 performances that was – unexpected you know the the there was a lot of question marks coming in with his Brunswick Blue Devils team they you know they kind of they didn't have a great season last year um you know you were you were seeing a lot of those those players that last year that were sophomores are now juniors with some experience we're starting to see that come to fruition and you know what I saw against North Royalton and again not just on the offensive side of the ball but the defensive side of the ball yeah holding a quarterback like Joe Marisek to essentially nothing on the game in the game um, and constantly pressuring him constantly forcing uncharacteristic throws, uncharacteristic mistakes. I don't know if there was an issue with wind. I don't, I don't understand what it seemed like he was floating some of the balls a little bit too much. Uh, but it, it just, what I was impressed with was, the de- the offensive and defensive lines for Brunswick were dominant. If you're an oh, offense, absolutely. if you're if you're an offensive line, if you're the offensive line coach for Brunswick and Coach Pinzoni have to be thrilled with the the fact that they didn't have to throw the ball, they didn't really need to throw it downfield. They were gashing North Royalton for 10, 15, 20 yard clips, and that's what put the Bears on their heels early, and then it just snowballed from there. It was yeah. more of a. It was. It was more impressive to me the domination on both part on both defensive and offensive lines. As a former lineman myself, you recognize it very quickly who has the upper hand. Brunswick's defensive ends were constantly crashing the pocket, forcing Marisek to roll out. Their offensive and defensive. I'm sorry. Their offensive guards were getting such a good push on the on the defensive line of North Ridge or of North Royalton that. You know the running backs and the quarterback had the opportunity to just pull the ball and run, and it was something that was very, very impressive um, to watch, especially given the fact of all the praise that we've heard of of Joe Marisek and how good he is. I mean, he's an accurate commit, and he's a very, very good quarterback, and he was just rattled. I mean, that's that's all you can say about it. You could just see that Brunswick played perfect football in every single phase of the game special teams was good uh defense and offense were perfect i think i i think yeah. they only punted twice um you know and and they only and then those two came in the second half when it was a running clock um you know they never punted in the first half everything that everything that brunswick wanted to do offensively they were able to execute it was there was not a lot of penalties there was not a lot of you know, sloppy play. It was 
very well executed from a third party standpoint. Not invested. Yeah. Not again. I know you and Josh and all and Ed are, are, are Ed's a little bit more invested than all of us. Obviously, he was on the sidelines for that game, but it was just it was very impressive. And Coach Pinzoni talked about it. It's getting them all on one message. It's taught. It's you know building towards a goal, and that's what it is. And that's that's an that's an important thing to take take away. Is he get, has the support of that community of Brunswick of the of the staff of the kids, of the parents, they trust Mark Pinzoni to do the job, and you see that. Now the question is, where? what's the next step they can take? They're 2-0, and okay? They only won, what, two games last year all year. They have to start winning some conference games. They need to make some noise. It's tough because they're not in the Pioneer Conference anymore where that game meant, some, meant some, a little bit more than what it does. You know, you have your Menors, you have your Solons, you have your Euclid, you have... Yeah, it's going to be you know a tough grind. That's, that's a tough conference. So you need to get these wins to galvanize your team and realize that they can do this going in against those teams that are better or more experienced or maybe just have that pedigree. And I think, you know, what I, what I, really, what I really look like, what I really look for on this is the fact that a lot of the key contributors that, uh, that we saw were juniors. They were they were guys that are going to be coming back next year. So it's interesting to see how this season's going to play out for the re- for the rest of the season for Brunswick. On the flip side, North Royalton just got smacked in the mouth early, and we're on their heels both offensively and defensively. Uh, their star quarterback was not did not have a good game, but that happens to a lot of quarterbacks. It happens to professionals. It happens to everybody who plays that position because it's such a difficult position. There's a lot of expectation on Joe Marisek, and I think. He has still the opportunity to make a a a a statement with this team in the suburban national division. It's going to be interesting to see how they rebound from this. Obviously, they go they host Highland. Highland's reeling a bit. They're not exactly living up. To, they, they're they're missing. They're they're finding out what life is like without the human highlight reel, Jake Rogers. You know that's going to be different. So maybe they could maybe they can use this as a springboard into conference play. But I was just overly impressed with the job that Mark Pinzoni and his staff did in game planning and and really in how that team executed. It was a fantastic display. The end of this game was 49 to nothing. Brunswick walked in and walked out and never once was this game in doubt that Brunswick was going to win. And, and yeah. at one point, they just kept scoring. Every time they got the ball, they just kept scoring. In the second quarter, well, they scored like 28 unanswered points. At yeah, some point. it was it was actually forty two to nothing forty two to nothing into halftime and yeah and you know I mean I think the the key in this game was I mean a, you know the defense really uh, forced Marisek to uh, throw you know I mean I think he had three interceptions in this game and two of them were very good interceptions like diving and, mm-hmm. and making some nice catches but Jacob Charette he the offense just once they for I think every turnover that North Royalton had I, I believe they points. turned it into points yep. and that was huge. Uh, but North Royalton is a very good team. I mean, th- you know, this is a, a little bump in the road, and this is going to happen. It just depends on how they're going to rebound from this because uh, Marisek is a is a really good quarterback. I mean, he he has a strong arm. He has that really good build. A nice guy. You know, before the game, I'm walking up, getting ready to take a picture, and he just turns around and says, "Hey, thanks for coming. We appreciate your coverage." I mean, one of those nice kids. Um, you know, that, that obviously respects you. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, he's going to do some great things. You know, it's a bump in the road um, that just wasn't wasn't their night. But give credit to Brunswick. I mean, they game plan. Um, those kids were prepared and ready to come out and, and play. And Jacob Charette, man, what a, what a game he yeah, had as a quarterback. Absolutely. I mean, and again, defensively, they, they had sacks, they had interceptions, everything you'd want as a defensive coordinator. They just they 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 dominated that game and and it was very 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 impressive performance against a very good team. Uh, Brunswick, you know, beat Lorraine in what was considered an upset last week, and again, this is I would say an upset as well. And I don't think a lot of people had Brunswick on their radar. Again, yeah. they only won two games last year, but now they've matched their yearly win total from last year, so they're playing with house money at this point, right? Yeah, I mean, and that's. Um... You know that that's what was unbelievable, and that's the same with Midview. Midview had two wins. I actually think Brunswick might have only won one game last year, um, but I'm I'm not sure about that. These are one or two games last year. So either way, you know, getting their second one already uh, in in the second week, um, you know, very impressive. And congratulations to them. And 
And, um, you know, Jacob Charette had a heck of a game. He finished with five touchdowns, three passing, two rushing. And uh, they'll host Rhodes um, here in week three. So that's uh, a game for Brunswick uh, that they hopefully will come away with and uh, get a win. But let's give you our G&G Fitness Coach of the week and Sean I mean this is impressive 326 votes mm-hmm. it ended today and we had uh in the 326 votes it doesn't tell you how many votes per coach but Mark Pinzoni of Brunswick is our winner at 51% we had Dave Lakovic of Fairview with 31% of the vote. Tom DeLuca had 16%, and Terry Sistone of Revere, 2%. All these coaches deserve, deserve to be I mean, exactly, Coach of the yeah. Week. They they had great weeks. Um, you know, it depends how many people came out and voted in Brunswick. Mm-hmm. They were, they're on a high right now. but They were pumped up, man. Those fans were pumped up. But congratulations to Mark Pinzoni of Brunswick. He is our G&G Fitness Coach of the week with 51% of the vote. And now, you know, let's let's get into a little bit of our uh, – we just covered the game of the week, which was Brunswick and North Royalton, where Brunswick won 49 to nothing in that game, and uh, we're dominant from the start. We gave our coach of the week, the G&G Fitness Coach of the Week, was Mark Pinzoni of Brunswick at 51%. Now let's go over our nominees for our player of the week, which is uh, – Sponsored by RRT Productions. Um, it's the RRT Productions Player of the Week. And in the Southwestern Conference, it was the North Olmstead Eagles quarterback, Anthony Guercio, um, as he's the quarterback there and had five touchdowns and a win over Westlake and is really, I mean, he just is a wrecking ball there uh, for North Olmstead as he's been an offensive machine. We also have running back Brandon Troke. Trocano. 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 Sorry Trocano. about that. Of Revere. Um, Owen Bainbridge, quarterback at Stowe. Uh, running back Brian Trouble of Menor. We saw the performance he put out against St. Ignatius. He also uh, had a great performance. And quarterback Stephen Nevelinsky of Illyria Catholic. All these guys. I mean, what? Fantastic performances. Yeah. All, all five of these guys. Um, yeah, there's five of them, right? Yeah. Yeah, five of them. And then, uh, you know, obviously they've – these are the standouts. But, again, for me at least in the Suburban League, it was hard to pick these guys uh, simply because it was – there was a lot of great performances uh, that, you know, stood out and it was hard to pick. But I had to pick a guy that's – you know, Brandon Tricano for the last few years has been that guy for them. And yeah. he's starting to – he's, he's a leader on that team. Same thing with Nate Klonowski. It was hard to pick between those two. Owen Bainbridge had a great game. I mean, you're, you're the quarterback of that team. You're going in there. You're the leader of that team, making, you know, the, the plays you need to make to win in a hostile environment at Barberton against a tough opponent. Yeah, Got that's a hats huge hats off win. to him. You know, we talked about Brian Trobel. The guy was a, the, the workhorse for Menor. Uh, Nathan, or I'm sorry, Stephen uh, Navalinsky from Elyria Catholic, just putting up monster numbers in the GLC. I mean, it's the Elyria Catholic Panthers are, are 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 a force to be reckoned with in that conference, and they're and they're and they're showing it. And then obviously uh, Brian Gorkio from uh, North Olmsted, from North the Olmsted, Eagles. the Eagles, a very impressive performance. So, how this is going to work, boys and girls, fans and fans, that we're going to open this up for what two days. I'm not sure how long. Uh, yeah, probably, probably. Uh, so vote in by Wednesday, and then we'll announce on yep. Twitter who's the winner of the Player of the Week poll. We're gonna we're we're workshopping this a little bit to see how we're gonna do this. Obviously, nice that RRT Productions, on top of using their studio today, also uh, is sponsoring this poll because when you when they shoot and they edit, you win. That's. Uh, <laughs> I like that live nice, read. Yeah. So yeah, uh, so go ahead and go out there and vote, and then we will uh, we'll post the winner on Twitter and on our website uh, on Wednesday, and get you ready for our game of the week for week three. And Rob, yeah, let's get into let's that. get into it. Let's Perfect. talk about Lead it. In. Where is sports? On, where in the world is sports on tap going to be Friday night, week three, Northeast Ohio football? Rob, go. Well, Josh and I will be at. Fairview. What? 
to cover Rocky River, the Pirates, against the Ooh, Fairview Park Warriors. Doggy. Crosstown rivalry. Yep. And Big time. Pirates and the Warriors getting down. And we're excited. Uh, Great Lakes Conference, get ready. Because you're coming. our game of the week. We're coming. And uh, excited to get out that way. And, uh, you know, it should be an exciting game. Both teams yep. uh, coming off of uh, wins. Yes. So I think Rocky River is 2-0. and And I know Fairview for sure is 2-0. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's going to be a fun game to be a part of. A little bit of a rivalry being right next door to each other. So excited to get out. And Fairview has a beautiful facility and a nice field there. Um, so me and Josh will be down on the field. If you see guys in black shirts with, yep. you know, it's like a little white also yep. in there. Sports on tap. You know, say hi. Give us uh, a wave from the stands or, you know, we'll see uh, if we're uh, by the field. And uh, we'll have a good time. And, and check at SOT Podcast um, for all the coverage. Hashtag SOTHSF. Yep. You got scores you want us to tell us about. You got stats you want us to throw out on this show. Go ahead and shoot us an email at sportsontappodcast at gmail. Send it to our website. Hook up with us on Twitter. We're all over the place. We're trying to grow this thing, make everything look great. Uh, and shout out to all the you know uh, uh, athletic directors, coaches, players, yeah. parents. If we're mur- if we're if we're murdering the pronunciation of names, we apologize. Unfortunately. You know, we're he's working with a Brunswick education. I'm working with a Dayton <laughs> education. It's a whole thing, but yeah, we don't than, have pronunciation. We're not so. we're not grammar people. We're not we're not that. So, but uh, yeah, we're having a blast so far. It's been a real nice turnout for the first yeah. two weeks, Rob. And it's two weeks are in the book, man. And before you know, it, it's gonna be playoff time. Yeah, and you know, week three is gonna be uh, exciting. I think there's a lot of good games that we went over. Uh, but you know, if if there's also, uh, you know, people that want to help our show, like you said, it always helps to get the stats and, yeah. the, and the recaps for these. So if you're part of an athletic department, if you're a, a high school kid and you're at a game posting and you want to send us the stats, we'll obviously give you credit. And, uh, you know, you can even come on our show and talk about it if you'd like. You know, we'll see how it goes. Uh, but uh, so far it's been a lot of fun. Uh, SportsOnTapPodcast.com. Um, there'll be a story up of our game of the week. There's photos. There's videos. Twitter polls. We got it yeah. all, man. We're doing We're it all. We're all over the place. So <laughs> get involved and enjoy the show. And, uh, Sean, any last thoughts before we close down the show here? I, I, I'm I, just hope. I'm glad we're, we're, we're in the swing of things. I think from week one to week two, there's always, you know, we, look, we went back. We looked at some film. We made some adjustments. We called an right. audible. This week, uh, you know, really impressed and just happy that we're back doing football weekly and talking about it and having a blast. Yeah, that's for sure. Well, want to thank everyone who uh, listened here tonight. Remember, you can uh, go back and and uh, listen to these as they're archived on our website at sportsontappodcast.com, on our YouTube page as well, and on iTunes. Um, catch us at SOT Podcast for our game of the week which will be Friday. So I want to thank everyone for listening. It's been a blast. Week two in the books. We'll look forward to week three. For Sean Duffy, Josh Jeffy, Ed Dick, I'm Rob Troutman saying so long for Sports on Tap. We'll see you Friday in Fairview Park, Ohio. Game on! Have a good week, everyone. See ya. Thanks for listening to Sports on Tap. Make sure you visit our website at www.sportsontappodcast.com. We'd also like to thank our partners, NEO Sports Insiders, bringing you the best in Northeast Ohio sports coverage. Greater Cleveland High School Hockey League, home of the Baron Cup. Z's Cream and Beef Cream at Z's. RRT Productions, we shoot, we edit. You win specializing in sports recruiting videos for all high school athletes. Thanks for listening to Sports on Tap. Make sure you visit our website, www.sportsontappodcast.com. We would also like to thank our partners, Greater Cleveland High School Hockey League, home 
of the Baron Cup. Z's Cream and Bean, make life sweet, eat ice cream at Z's. RRT Productions, we shoot, we edit, you win. Specializing in sports recruiting videos for all high school athletes. And GV Artwork and Design, original and one of a kind.